So now I'm going to give you an example of how this process works. Okay? The design procedure, as given in the notes here, is first you're going to build a state table. Either I'll give you the problem description or I'll give you a state diagram. You'll get the information from somewhere and you're going to build out the state table. Then you're going to choose or be instructed on the type of flip-flop, either D or JK. I might tell you you have to use a D or a JK. Um, if I don't, then you can choose one or the other. Then you're going to derive the excitation table for the circuit. You're going to simplify that using K maps and you're going to draw the circuit itself. So let's walk through that process using this example. I would give you this table, uh, this diagram. Here is a state diagram. Use JK flip-flops to generate a circuit that will execute this sequence. If I'm in state zero and I get a zero, I want to stay in state zero. If I'm in state one, zero, and I get a one, I want to go to state one, one. This tells me for exhaustively for every possible state and every possible input on that state, what the next state should be and what the output should be. Now in these notes, I've left out part of these solutions. This uh, video will give you the answers. So you start by building out a state table or a characteristic table. Given the current state and the inputs, what is the next state and the outputs? This is just an exhaustive list of all possibilities. And again, this is just like we did before. This is min term zero, this is min term seven. So you just list all possibilities. And then based on the requirements in this uh, diagram, you will generate what the next state should be and what the output should be. So we can just copy this out. If I'm in state one zero, and I get a zero, I should stay in state one zero and the output should be zero. So if I'm in state um, one zero and I get a zero, I should stay in state one zero and the output should be a zero. If I'm in state one zero and I get a one, I should go to state one one and the output should be a one. If I'm in state one zero and I get a one, I should go to state one one and the output should be a one. If I'm in state one, one, and I get a zero, I'll stay in state one, one, and I'll give a zero. Oops. I'll stay in state one, one, and the output should be a zero. And then if I'm in state one, one, and I get a one as an input, I should transition to state zero, zero, and my output should be a zero. So this is the complete state table. And again, this is the first part of your process. You'll list all possible current state input combinations, and you'll generate a next state and an output. And uh, it looks like that. <clears throat> you can screenshot that if you want to. Then, this is where the design for a JK flip-flop will differ from the design for a D flip-flop. For a D flip-flop, the excitation table is the same as the characteristic table, because you provide as input to the D flip-flop the value you want it to store. For a JK flip-flop, you have to provide inputs to the J and K that will cause the transition you're seeking. So the excitation table will be different. So what we do is for each pair of transitions, um, so if I'm in, for example, um, let's do a different color. If I'm in state zero here and I want to go to state zero, I need to cause that transition in that circumstance and the way to do that is with particular J and K inputs. Now, if I, I'm in state zero and I want to be in state zero, remember there's two ways to do that. I can either hold or I can reset. So if I'm in state zero and I want to be in, and I want to in state zero, I want to go to state zero, I can either hold or reset. So you set J to zero, you set K to I don't care, because there's two possibilities to make that transition. Same thing here, if uh, my Q is zero, if I'm in state zero and I want to go to state one, there's two ways to do that. I can either toggle or I can set. And so that's J is one, K is I don't care. Here is the excitation table for the JK flip-flop. And we can read from there each pair of state transitions for the entire table. We just copy from the table and put it in. So it's really a, just a copy and paste procedure. Let's fill in the rest of this table. If I'm in state zero, <clears throat> sorry, if I'm in state one and I want to be in state one, then I can, doesn't matter what J is, K should be zero. 
So I'm in one and I want to be in one, a don't care and a zero. If a one to a one, that's a don't care and a zero. A one to a zero is a don't care and a one. That's how I fill in this entire table. Then for the second, for the, the, the zero flip-flop, I'll fill in these ones as well. If I'm at zero and I want to be at zero, I can be a zero and I don't care. A zero to a one is a one and a don't care. A one to a one is a don't care and a zero. And a one to a zero is a don't care and a one. This will take some time because you have to look at every possible state transition pair for each state variable you're looking at and then decide what inputs you have to provide to the JK flip-flop to make that transition happen in that circumstance. Once you've completed this table, now you have four K-maps to do. You've got this K-map here, this K-map here, this K-map here, and this K-map here, but as you can see, they are chock full of don't cares, which means the results are gonna be quite simple when you're done. So if I look at the original table, this is what I provided in the notes. There's the answer. And again, you can screenshot that if you want to. Now we'll complete the design using our K maps. And you can see lots of don't cares means nice, simple procedures. So the first one here, this is the J input for the zero flip-flop. Oh, sorry, for the one flip-flop. The J input for the one flip-flop is 0010XXXX. I can read that from here. 0010XXXX. For the K one, it's XXXX1110. It's XXXX1100. This is why I got a new K maps. You can do a lot of K maps. The J0 now is blank in the note, so let's fill it in. 01XX, 01XX. It goes 0, whoops. Uh, 0, 1, x, x, 0, 1, x, x, right? From here, 0, 1, x, x, 0, 1, x, x, looks like that. And then we can group like this. And that is, Q doesn't, Q changes, so it's gone. Uh, Q changes, so it's gone. This is just equal to x. So this is j0 equals just the value x. Nice. Then we can do the same thing for k0. x, x, 1, 0, x, x, 0, 1. <clears throat> x, x, 1, 0, x, x, 0, 1. Well, that kind of looks like it might be a checkerboard pattern. There's a couple ways to do that as checkerboards. Probably the easiest way is to do a group here and a group here. And then what you have is Q1 X, Q1 X, or Q1 prime X prime, which equals Q1 exclusive nor X. So we produce the tables based on the K-map um, excitation table itself. Then we can produce the K-maps for that, and then we can simplify the K-maps. And again, for JK, there will be a lot of K-maps, two per state variable, but the end results will be quite simple. And then here's one for the output. And the end result then looks like this. We just draw the circuits based on the solution to those K-maps. J0 is X. Uh, so J1 is Q0 X prime. We take Q0 from here and X prime, and there we are. That's the nice thing about these JK flip-flops is that we always have Q and Q prime available as state variables to use as inputs to our state transition logic. So J is going to be X prime Q, like that. K is going to be X Q. So here's Q0 and here's X. Then J is just going to be X for the zero for the zero flip flop. J is just X. And then K, we can draw it in, is exclusive nor between Q1 and X. So here's Q1. Where do we get Q1 from? Well, it's right here. We bring this around. 
somewhere here. And then we exclusive nor that with x. Here's x. And then the result goes into k. And then we're done. And we need uh, an output for y as well. It's q0 prime, which is right here. This is q0 prime. We can go all the way around, or we can come back like this. And it with x. One more use of x. My drawing skills with the pen not great, but you can see the result. Okay? And I'll fill that in with my uh, slide, and you'll see where we are. So that's the final result. So you can see the entire process from start to finish uh, is start with the description of the problem, build a characteristic table that says, given the current state and the inputs, what is the next state and the outputs? Convert that to an excitation table that says, given the state transitions I wanna have happen, what inputs do I have to provide? And then just build the logic for those inputs.